Hey everyone, welcome back to Health Angel Solutions. Today, I'm going to talk about how Hashimoto's symptoms progress over time, how they can affect your blood levels, and how to determine whether you're in a hyperthyroid or hypothyroid state, among other things. To start, I'd like to give you this example. This graph, which shows a patient with Hashimoto's disease, shows that the patient's condition has changed over time. The pink and blue dots on the graph reflect the patient's TSH and T4, respectively. Essentially across a 15, 16, and 18-year span thus, we essentially just look at the results of this patient's lab work each time she is tested. As you can see here, this is done without medication, by the way, so we are just testing her on the fly. The standard of care for Hashimoto's disease is, as you may know, to kind of take a wait and see approach, which means that once you have accumulated enough damage to your thyroid, we'll replace that lost gland or lost hormone with some form of levothyroxine. So this is exactly how the wait and approach method works, which is obviously not ideal. What's interesting to note though, is that her lab results fluctuate over time. You can see that she has periods of hyperthyroidism, in which case her TSH is essential zero, as shown by the little pink or purple dots that are pointing toward the zero end. You can also see that her free T4 is higher during these periods, and when her free T4 drops, guess what? Her TSH increases. Hence, you can see a pattern where one goes down, the other rises, etc. What this indicates for you as a patient with Hashimoto's disease is that your symptoms will change over time because she won't be feeling well during this period of time. Actually, it appears to have been only about a year, but the important thing to remember is that she will feel awful during this time, experiencing symptoms of hyperthyroidism that won't be good, and she will go hypothyroid right away afterward. First and foremost, it is important for you to comprehend that Hashimoto's disease progresses over time and that your symptoms may vary depending on the range of your illness. In general, these symptoms can be divided into three main groups. The broad symptoms of Hashimoto's disease, including the symptoms of hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, and generalized symptoms. Let's begin with the general symptoms of Hashimoto's disease. The intriguing aspect is that these are incredibly vague symptoms, which is why it can be so challenging to diagnose. When you combine that with the reality that the majority of doctors don't even check for TPO antibodies, thyroglobulin antibodies, or whatever antibodies they may be looking for, they may simply look at your thyroid and say, oh, it's kind of okay, so you know you're probably fine. They may not even bother to check those antibodies. Consequently, it's critical that you comprehend this. So first of all, general exhaustion or a feeling of being run down, just sort of blah. Mild weight gain, usually only five to 10 pounds. You may not even realize it, or you may be thinking to yourself, you know, I'm not exercising as much as I could have. Whatever the case, you may only be gaining a small amount of weight, but it's unusual for you. Usually, weight gain is associated with a flat effect or depressed mood only once more feeling blah. Not like you're having trouble focusing or paying attention. Not too much, just a little bit, you know, like I mentioned, feeling a little spacey, not quite there. Some minor changes to your skin, like dry skin, cracked lips, dry brittle hair. Not too much that might worry you, but enough that you go get something checked because you're thinking, this just, this isn't right. Although this isn't typical, it is really a slight constipation, the kind that you may brush off as being caused by. Something else. Moderate retention of fluids, particularly in the face or lower limbs that could be something like mild joint pain or aegis muscle aches, which again kind of goes with that feeling of just kind of feeling mild, the moderate changes in menstrual cycle, maybe just a couple days earlier or a couple days later. It could also be something like waking up with a little bit of puffy eyes or something like that. Having a change in the quality of your voice, typically like voice coarseness, or the sensation that your throat is swelling okay. Now, I don't mean like your trachea is being crushed, but it's just something that's unusual for you. So hopefully you're getting the idea that these are just very generic, non-specific symptoms. If you went to your doctor with any of these symptoms, saying, well, I'm just a little rundown. He would say, oh, 
That's just because you're not sleeping that well, or that's just because of whatever. So it's easy to write patients with these symptoms off because they're not that specific. However, this doesn't imply that everything is oak or that that's the appropriate course of action. However, since I want you to have that knowledge, I usually advise getting your antibodies checked if you have three or five of these symptoms. At this point, you probably already know that you have Hashimoto's disease. But for those viewers who may not be aware of this or who may think they have it, that would be a sign that you should get those checked. That's kind of how it begins. But as you know, and as I kind of hinted to earlier, there's a progression. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make. So if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow that said back to the video. It could be very confusing for the poor patient who is experiencing these things because all of these symptoms are just completely different. You could go in thinking you're hyperthyroid and he's like, no, your thyroid is fine. You're like, what I know this isn't normal. It could be very confusing for the patient. So let's talk real quick about the kind of hyperthyroid symptoms that you might have now realized too. If we were just to talk from a general sense of Hashimoto, you would start with those generalized symptoms. I simply discussed feeling that something wasn't quite right. You might not realize it, but the majority of people do not experience episodes of hyperthyroidism at first. Instead, they primarily experience hypothyroid symptoms all the time after accumulating enough gland damage to prevent their body from producing enough thyroid hormone to cause hyperthyroidism symptoms. Generally, this will manifest as generalized symptoms at first, followed by hypothyroid symptoms over time, but it may also manifest as generalized symptoms with slight hyperthyroidism symptoms. Hence, simply keep that in the back of your mind. So, if you have hyperthyroid symptoms, you might have symptoms like these. For example, hot flashes are episodes of heat intolerance. Mood swings are usually classified as being on the anxiety spectrum. This means that you might have racing thoughts, worry constantly, or just feel jittery and a little on edge. You know, the kind of person who gets scared easily. That's generally how I put it. And that's what I mean when I say the spectrum. So that's what I should say. You may be thinking right now, I love to have too much energy, but people dislike this kind of energy. Fatigues or episodes of energy swings that can fluctuate in intensity are also possible in hypothyroidism. Additionally, fatigue is a symptom of both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Symptoms of both conditions include difficulty sleeping, which is usually accompanied by episodes of insomnia that are usually caused by a racing mind at night and heat intolerance. Consequently, you may experience facial flushing or a feeling of warmth in your extremities. These are the hyperthyroid symptoms, and you may or may not experience them. Generally speaking, this is not normal, but you may experience them now. Heart palpitations or the sensation of a racing pulse, even if your pulse is not racing, are another major one that I believe most people present with to some degree. Additionally, you may experience weight gain or loss. It's shocking to learn that even hypothyroid people can experience weight gain. You then proceed to the progressive hypothyroid symptoms, which you are probably already aware of, but which are typically similar to the initial generalized symptoms we experience only worse. For example, rather than experiencing mild fatigue or exhaustion, you may now experience extreme fatigue or exhaustion, which alerts you to the fact that something is wrong and makes it difficult for you to get out of bed or go to work. These symptoms are a progression of the initial symptoms but are now much worse. Similarly, you may experience moderate weight gain instead of the initial we're talking about a set of 5 to 10 pounds. So over a typical 6 to 12 month period, you're 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. Thus. That is undoubtedly abnormal, correct? You could gaining 5 to 10 pounds may be the result of other factors, but gaining 30 pounds or more is hard to determine without altering your diet or anything similar. These changes also affect the skin and hair. So we're talking about hair thinning to the point where your scalp is visible and clumps of hair coming out in the shower. We are conversing. It's not just that you're feeling depressed. 
You may also experience, and usually do, some degree of menstrual irregularities, which could be on the things like PMS slash PNDD fibrocystic breast disease endometriosis, all of those kinds of estrogen dominant like symptoms. For example, you know that your hair is breaking in half, just very abnormal things that you know for sure are not normal. And then, of course, the extension of feeling kind of blah definitely alters the mood to the point where you now are on the depression spectrum. Then, of course, the GI symptoms progress as well. We're talking about chronic and daily constipation as opposed to, say, going every two to three days now that we're talking every three, four, or five days now that it's also accompanied by gas and bloating now that you probably have low stomach acid. And then we're talking about chronic and debilitating muscular pain or joint pain. At this point, it's more like, well, I'm not so why you know it's beyond aching now, you may have small intestinal fungal or bacterial overgrowth. And now you're beginning to exhibit the full-blown symptoms of hypothyroidism. The important thing to remember in this situation is that Hashimoto's symptoms progress and change over time. Therefore, you should be aware of this. Secondly, you should try to catch these issues as soon as possible so that, if you can start treatment when you're just experiencing a blah feeling, your weight gain won't increase from 5 pounds to 30 pounds. I'll list other videos I have on how to treat Hashimoto's below. But for now, I just wanted to focus on these symptoms, how they progress, and how you know what to identify what's happening to your body. Instead, you can kind of cut that down and prevent it from getting worse. So that's why you really need to know these things, and that's why you have to get treatment. As we wrap up our discussion on how Hashimoto's symptoms progress over time, it's crucial to remember that early detection and proactive management can significantly impact your quality of life. Each individual's journey with Hashimoto's is unique, often marked by fluctuating symptoms and varying degrees of severity. Being aware of potential changes can empower you to seek timely medical advice, explore treatment options, and make lifestyle adjustments that support your health. Staying informed about your condition, including how it may evolve, is an essential part of self-care. We encourage you to track your symptoms and engage in open conversations with your healthcare provider to create a tailored plan that suits your needs. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. Support communities and resources are available to help you navigate the complexities of living with Hashimoto's. If you found this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up, share it with others who might benefit, and subscribe to Health Angel Solutions for more insightful content on managing health conditions effectively. Your engagement not only helps us grow, but also allows us to reach more people seeking answers. Together, we can foster a supportive community focused on health and wellness. Stay proactive, stay informed, and take care of yourselves. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video, where we'll dive deeper into strategies for living well with Hashimoto's. Remember, your health is your greatest wealth.